I've got to do at some point a video on the Aftermath trilogy and how it set the world building for Star Wars canon off, at least for the post-sequel era, on really bad foot. If that's something you guys are interested in, please let me know. If this video ends up being what I would consider a success, maybe I'll go back, reread the three books, and sort of do a full review, post-mortem, etc. The issues, however, are related not only to how the plot is structured and the world building decisions, but I think most notably the writing. It is at times almost unbearable. I got extremely frustrated even listening to the audiobook. Without being too offensive to Mr. Wendig, at times the writing has the same sort of humor as like an early 2010s Tumblr post. That being said, as I alluded to in my last video, which you should definitely check out if you haven't already, although there are some issues with the series, there were also a few really interesting things. Most notably for me, the Empire's observatories and the character of Gallius Rax. Rax, like Ray Sloan, is given so much importance in the novel that it's genuinely pretty shocking how little attention he's gotten from other authors. I mean, we don't even have an official image of Rax, which is insane. He was essentially the architect of the Empire's downfall and the Battle of Jakku specifically. He was one of the main guys carrying out Palpatine's contingency, something that early on in Star Wars canon expanded universe material was a really big aspect of the lore. Aftermath treats Jakku Jakku as a planet with some importance beyond just being a world where the Empire will fall. We learn through flashbacks that as Palpatine is scouting out what would eventually become the site for Jakku's observatory, he encounters a young Gallius Rax who has stowed away on his ship. Palpatine discovers Rax, but instead of killing him, he gives him a purpose. I'll read a quote from Star Wars Aftermath Life Death. The second choice is I give you a new life, a better one, a task that if you manage will lead you to greater things, not something so mundane as a job, but a role, a purpose. I sense a new potential, a destiny. The purpose is to guard the construction of Palpatine's observatory, which Rax does with a full fervor. After 10 years, Palpatine takes him off Jakku and prepares him not only for a life within the Imperial military, but for his role in the contingency, the downfall that the Empire must suffer if Palpatine is to die for whatever reason. The prelude for the final book in the trilogy, Aftermath, Empire's End, actually has a really interesting section featuring Rax that, now that we have episode 9, should be pulled on by future authors. Gallius Rax is summoned to the second Death Star during the events of Return of the Jedi. It's right as the Rebel Strike Team is traveling to the Sanctuary Moon of Endor. Palpatine senses a shatter point, and he recognizes that there's someone on the ship who may bring the contingent to bear, i.e. Palpatine could die. But I mean, this is important because it's not only Palpatine foreseeing his death, but it also suggests that based on the way he's interacting with Rax, that he's got a plan, which he obviously does, which sets off the events of the Aftermath trilogy. Now, a lot of that's not really worth going over for the purposes of this video, but Rax rises to the role of Admiral in the chaos following Palpatine's death, and eventually before for the Battle of Jakku secures the title of Counselor to the Empire, essentially becoming the new Emperor. Empire's End is really about Grand Admiral Sloan facing off against Gallius Rax for control of the Empire's future, and there's sort of a dual thing at play here. There's Operation Cinder, which we see in Star Wars Battlefront, basically the Empire burning worlds, both loyal to the Empire and the Rebel Alliance, the New Republic, and the Greater Contingency, which was meant to not only only destroy the Empire's enemies, but the Empire itself. The idea was one we sort of see in Dark Empire, especially the source book, basically that if the Empire can't protect its Emperor, it doesn't deserve to exist. That leads to Jakku. There's some, you know, bad world building here, but essentially the contingency sees a large portion of Imperial military strength move to Jakku for what is ostensibly meant to be a final battle against the New Republic in reality. It was a scheme to get everyone in one place so that they could be destroyed. The Jakku Observatory played a part in this, but also the Empire at this point was sure to be crushed by the New Republic, and morale was also just being weakened by being on such a harsh and desolate world. At Jakku, Rax is fully in control of Imperial military forces. In the novel, he gives a speech. His plan was to oversee the destruction of the Empire, then to flee to the unknown regions with sort of the sea 
seeds of what would become the new empire of the first order whatever if you're familiar with the character of brendel hawks he was going to be one of the new architects of the imperial military as forming in the unknown regions however in the emperor's observatory on jakku rax is confronted by ray sloan and she ends up fatally wounding him as he's dying he relays to ray sloan the future of the empire listen listen there's a ship short walk from here he wheezes imperialis take it hux is there others use the map in a data spike in the the computer set a course for the unexplored he coughs flecks of red dot his lips along with bubbles of spit infinity already sent a ship ahead a dreadnought the emperor's it hits her of course back on coruscant looking through the imperial archives and taking an accounting of all ships one stood out as not being accounted for properly it was said the new republic took it down but no tracking record showed that fate the eclipse she says go leave this place start the game over and that's the end of rax and really he is successful in his plan the contingency does destroy the empire even though as the subsequent chapter would note many attribute the empire's fall to a new republic victory no he did follow the orders in the contingency of palpatine but he was also arguably the most influential man in the empire in the year after the battle of endor despite that rax only really exists in the aftermath trilogy he doesn't appear in star wars battlefront 2 i was looking it up i guess there is a reference to him as a sort of easter egg i didn't remember that but you would think considering the fact that we see the battle of jakku and he gives that rousing speech that he'd appear he gets a small mention in the last jedi novelization i'll just read it snoke knew he himself was an unlikely fulcrum just about the furthest thing from what the tattered remnants of palpatine's empire had imagined as a leader the admirals and generals who'd survived the fury of the empire's implosion and the new republic's wrath had envisioned being led by someone else anyone else pitiless devious gallius rax dutiful cautious ray sloan the slippery political fanatic ormus apollon or even the unhinged but ambitious military architect brendel hux aside from that nothing and there's been plenty of content set in that period whether it's star wars squadrons one of the comics or a novel even bloodline it's not set in the era but it mentions the formation of the first order what happened to the empire you'd think Rex would be a central figure but he's been seemingly forgot about or abandoned despite being i think one of the better parts of the aftermath trilogy alongside really the contingency as a whole and palpatine's observatories anyway those are just my thoughts but i'm curious do you like the character of gallius rax would you at least like to see an image of him how do you imagine the canonical representation of the man i remember for a long time there was this concept art made by a fan going around and it was just james franco but i can't find it anymore but that's all for me today i'll see you next time let me know all of your thoughts and more down in the comments section